Hello everybody, it's Jeff again, and uh, I'm going to dive into our next live coding session. Uh, so this week I'm going to get a little bit started toward um, your assignment for materials. So I want to talk a little bit about collision detection and some ways that maybe uh, I can give you some tools to help you debug what's going on with your physics, because I think that there's probably going to be some confusion surrounding uh, physics when things go a little bit weird. Uh, I saw from your last assignment that there were a few people who had some strange physics behavior and it was at least sometimes caused by uh, an image that was just not really centered to exactly where the center of the body was and um, you would get sort of weird ideas about how um, how gravity was going to act on objects because it made it look like, the image made it look like, because it was off-center, that the center of gravity of that object was somewhere that it wasn't. Um, so uh, not only are we going to talk about um, getting started with doing collision detection, but I'm also going to, because this won't take very long, honestly collision detection is uh, not super hard to get up and working. Um, so the second part of this is that I'm going to dive into how to um, write yourself a little debug draw, which will also include some um, what we call conditional compilation uh, techniques. Uh, we're going to use some pre-compiler statements to be able to basically um, switch certain chunks of your code on and off depending whether you want to see it. So it's just going to be a little debug mode flag um, because we're going to add some stuff in that would be tremendously inefficient to ship in a real game, but, you know, it can be handy um, so that you can understand what's going on. Anyway, so um, might as well get started here. Um, I'm going to try and keep things fairly simple. I had questioned whether I should try and do things in like a really proper object-oriented way, but since uh, we're getting to the end and we're just trying to make a good working game at this point, um, I'm going to take a look at uh, my body class and make a minor addition to it. Um, if this were done more properly, you'd probably be making some sort of shape object or, or a shape class or circle class or something like that that would, that would define the shape of this thing. But I'm just going to um, roll it right into body because um, we're only going to have circles in our game. Uh, so why don't we just... Uh, you know, work with what we've got. So I'm going to add a float into my body uh, called radius. So we already have a position for this thing, and this is just going to define the radius of the circle that will be collidable around this body. And um, believe it or not, that is all I'm going to add to the body. Someone out there is probably going to ask the question, well, what about, like, there's got to be some sort of test collision function or something like that. Isn't that going to go in the body too? And my answer is actually no. Um, my preference is for the test collision uh, function to end up in the world. Um, and my reasoning for this is that the world um, may have to do, now mind you, in this class, we won't touch on any of this stuff, but the world eventually ends up having to make some fairly complicated decisions about how to resolve collisions and it's important that the world be the one to do this because it's the one that knows about all of the bodies in the world. Each body really only knows about itself and maybe the other body that it's coming into collision with if you're using this test collision function. But it doesn't know about anything in the rest of the world and it might be important to know some of those things about the rest of the world in order to resolve collisions effectively. However, uh, we're not going to dive into any of that, but we will um, go take a look at the world and add a test collision function to it. So I'm going to jump over here and uh, one sec. Uh, do, do, do. Get the right files open. Oh shoot. Okay, give me one second. I have issues. And I will fix them as quickly as I can. I just have to re-add some files to my other project. 
because apparently I broke it right before this video. Do keep picking all those files. Um, okay, and add those. All right, feels a little better. Great. Okay, so I'm going to show you. Um, an interesting thing that you can do in writing a function. You may not have ever seen anything quite like this before, and uh, that's my favorite kind of thing to show you guys. So, so I'm going to add a test collision function here. Um, like a lot of things, um, we've got a body that we don't expect to change because we're only testing the collision. We're not resolving the collision, so we're not going to change anything about the body. Um, so I've got my A and my B, and lastly, uh, so actually, let's just say that we got this far. And I'll throw a const on the end, because this isn't going to change anything in the world. Um, well, actually, it might later. Um, test collision. Okay. Notice that this is returning Boolean. Sort of the minimum result that we might want from test collision is that it tells us whether there is or isn't a collision. However, some point later, we're going to need more information from this because we're going to have to complete compute, or we're going to get very close to computing a normal to the collision just by doing this. So we might as well be able to get the normal out. But wouldn't it be weird to return this? I mean, doesn't that mean like, it puts you in this like really weird situation? You want to test collision and then you need to check for what exactly? Like what vector 3 represents no collision? Like that's, that's sort of bizarre, right? Because if this is returning a vector 3, then sure, if there's a collision, then you can return out the collision normal. But if there isn't a collision, then what, what is this vector 3? Like is it vector 3.0? I mean you know, meaning zero, zero, zero. I mean, you could say it's that, but that's a weird thing to ask the user to think of, to, to expect them to know that that means no collision. So I'm going to take the path of writing this a little bit like what Unity does for some of its functions. Um, and it's to do something like this. So I've added a third parameter in here, and it's a vector3 pointer. That's sort of a weird thing to do, isn't it? So what's happening here is that this is what we call an out variable. In C sharp, you would actually write this as like out vector3 um, to indicate this, but in C++, we don't have syntax for that. What I'm doing here is that when I call this function, I can pass in a pointer to a vector 3 that I already have before I've called this function and if there's a collision that vector 3 will get assigned to the value of the normal so that we can get the normal out as well as it telling us whether there's a collision or not so it kinda does two things at the same time but I've had this default value of null in here because if we just want to leave this off then we can just do the plain test of is there a collision if that's all we care about then we can just do that part so if you haven't seen this before uh, it's not as complicated as it looks um, I'll show you how to use it fairly soon it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty cool actually it's very useful um, can get a little bit confusing if you do this too much but if you used sparingly uh, and your and your um, parameter names are good it's uh, it's pretty cool it's really useful um, so I'm going to jump over to my CPP and uh, make myself a version of, oh dear, what have I done? Alright, take this default parameter off. Okay, good. So this is what we're looking for here. Now, this test collision function is going to actually be a lot simpler than you would guess. Um, because there's very little that needs to go into 
actually testing the collision between two circles, right? Because we need to find um, we need to find a vector from um, B to A. I'm going to say from B to A because at the end of the day we want a normal that points in the direction from B to A. So, you know, that'll be helpful eventually. Um, get the distance from B to A. So when I say, um, I guess I should maybe from the center of B to the center of A. Yeah. If, so remember that we're dealing with two circles here, and A and B, their positions are the centers of those circles, right? So if we're finding a vector from B to A so that we can get the distance from the center of B to the center of A, what we need to compare this to is here. You know what? Let me, let me crack out the incredible tools of, of art and um, visual aid. Uh, let me see, circle, can I just make, okay, so here's our circle one that we're interested in, and here's our circle two that we're interested in, cool. Um, now let's, maybe I can have a slightly larger brush, that would be cool. Alright, so we got the center of A and the center of B. And we're trying to come up with a vector that runs between the two of these things, right? So this is the vector here. Um, let's run our, so this is A and this is B. Sweet, look at my incredible art. Um, so now, there's a couple things going on here, right? Because in order to prove that there's a collision, I need to be able to show that, oops, I need another line. I want it in a different color. I need to be able to prove that our line, our vector AB that runs between these two things, is shorter than A's radius in green plus B's radius in blue, right? That's what we're going for here. So we're going to check that the distance is less than the sum of the radii. And that's ultimately what we need to return to, to see that this is in collision. So then things will get a little, we'll handle this somehow as, as we get on. But let's start with the beginning. So finding a vector from B to A. So for those of you who remember, um, your vector subtraction. So you want B, the position B to be the thing that you're subtracting from if you want, or pardon me, if you're finding from B to A, you want A subtract B because you want A to be the head of the vector and B to be the tail of the vector. So, um, again, I often call my vectors just like, you know, um, simple things. I prefer um, a variable name that tells me exactly what this thing does, even if it has to be long. In this case, it's fairly short, which is nice. Um, so this is going from B to A. And if we want to come up with the distance of this, if you will remember, the distance is the magnitude of the vector. So uh, our way of getting the magnitude, or at least with the way that I built up my vector 3, is to uh, check its length. So I can just simply ask for the length, and that's my distance. So that's all I need. And then lastly, uh, I'm interested in coming up with the radii between these two circles. Now, I mean, if I were to go um, just back up a tiny bit, if I had this situation, if I had a C here that, um, you know, was a different circle, let's just throw it in. 
So if I was doing a collision between B and C, and I was trying to come up with a vector that would run between the two of these, uh, oh, did I change the color of that? Oops. Um, okay, let's fix this. Okay, so I had a nice blue vector that ran between these two for the radius, so let's do another one of those. So this is the radius of B going in a different direction. And then, I don't know, let's give the, oops, let's give the radius of C this purple. Right, and then you'll notice, of course, that there's this little space in the middle, right? So remember that if these things aren't in collision, then there is this, this little space in here is going to be um, the distance on top of the two radiuses. So um, that's, what we're, that's what we're testing for here. We're, we're going to find if our distance is smaller than or equal to, uh, you could just say smaller than, I do smaller than or equal to, but I think that's a matter of taste. Um, so I'm just going to say a radius plus b radius, right? So if my distance is less than those two radii added together, then I'm good. Now, to be fair, if you were writing this function with like not considering this out normal b to a, you could make this statement, in fact, a lot simpler. Uh, you could just say this. That'd be it. That's the end. <laughs> that, that's the whole function if you're not trying to get the, the normal out of this. So um, this, is, this is a nice short way to write this because this will just return a Boolean value. So instead of having like an if statement to do like the if this return true, like I find it sort of silly and redundant to write this sort of thing because if you do like, unless you've got a good reason, like you're saying if this is true, then return true when you could just say return true, right? See what I mean? Um, but for what we're doing here, um, we're, we're going to do something a little bit like this because we have a good reason. So um, what I often like to do is this sort of thing, um, where in here I'm gonna do some stuff. Um, so this is where we um, set the normal to the collision. So that's what's gonna happen in here. Now you'll notice that I do this if whatever return true and then just return false. Um, some of you may feel like this works better and um, I don't care, either way is fine. Um, I just prefer the one that is a little bit less to write. Um, they're the same thing, ultimately the same thing for, for this circumstance. So, um, all right, so the last thing that we wanna do in here is set this out normal b to a. Now, um, the little catch that I've thrown in here is that this can be equal to null. So it's possible that we haven't actually assigned anything here. Um, and so to prevent us from writing to memory that is not ours, because be careful, you could, uh, you want to check first if your out normal is set to anything. Um, so if it's set, and you can just check it that easily, just if this, um, then um, you can do, now Scott may have shown you this, he probably has, that you're going to have to use a slightly interesting syntax to do this. You want to set, oops, not what I was going for, no, b to a dot, Remember, we are normalizing our vector here because that's what we're going to want out of this. So um, if you haven't encountered this syntax before, what this means is that because out normal b to a is a pointer to a vector, and we're trying to assign it to the value of a vector, we need to use this dereferencing operator on it first here to say that I want to set the value of this pointer to this because otherwise you are trying to set the pointer to a vector that does not make sense you can't do that so 
that little asterisk that matters. It's important. But that's it. That's my whole test collision function. So this is very functional. Um, it does a lot for us because first of all, um, even if we just leave this out normal B to A off when we're calling it, if we just say test collision between A and B, we can get back a Boolean result and it just goes through, test these parts, and if this isn't set, it just skips it and returns true. It's as lightweight as it could be, it's very performant, very, very easy to write. So this is what our, our test collision is sort of gonna, gonna look like here. Now, um, before I get too far along, I figure it's probably a good idea to put together some kind of uh, scene for us to work with. Um, oh, why am I in this class view? I don't want that right now. Uh, so I'm going to make a new class. I'm just going to call it Assignment 4. It's really going to be a whole lot like Assignment 3. Um, so. Four, I might as well set it base class here to scene. Cool. Um, I guess like the scene, I'm just going to throw out the CPP file. I'm not really too concerned with having that for the sake of what we're doing here. Um, sure. So, um, I am. How much of this am I going to dump in? <laughs> sure. I'll just dump in the stuff right up at the top to begin with, and then we'll, we'll work from there. OK, so this is what I have um, sort of to start off my assignment for. Um, I've now my assignment for, I'm not accounting for the fact that I have many pegs right now, I just have a peg, but um, it doesn't hurt to have some values for, for some of these things, for like the masses of objects and uh, their, their radii, um, whatever time scale that you're interested in using and setting up the, the window, um, you know, in whatever way you kind of need to, right? So. Um, at some point, you're going to need to be able to create a whole bunch of pegs, but we're not there. So um, what I have done is I've got a game object for my ball. I have the ball texture, uh, mostly so that I can free this later, and so that I can free this later. Um, and so I have my uh, my peg as an object, and I've got this is colliding variable, which I'm basically just going to use to print out to the console and then eventually do something a little bit fancier um, to show uh, where where we're at. So, <clears throat> or rather to show um, when things are in collision. So, um, let's dive into this. Um, I'm just going to paste my begin in here, because why not? So, I'll let you look over this. This should be no big surprise uh, for, anybody, for anybody as of yet. A4 ball position. Okay. I have some stuff to edit as of yet. Uh, I'll just knock these out for now. That should clean that up. Um, set camera bounds is maybe a function that I didn't include in your version. Let me take a look. Okay. That's not too big of a deal. Um, well, it's easy enough for me to, uh, to create that in uh, in your copy set camera bounds I put together just because it's like kind of a cleaner way of, of setting up your camera um, you don't have to do this but uh, it's it's nice I suppose so let me just open up a couple of files scene.h just copy this in so that's really all that consists of it's a small function and um, it basically looks like this. <clears throat> so, um, for example, you could call it um, well, that isn't quite right. How do I want to call that? 
I'll just set my default to this. So basically you're just giving the minimum, the maximum, the minimum, the maximum, and that sets up your, your camera to work like that. You could make a version of this function that was a little bit different. For example, you could make a version of this function that um, worked more like um, Um, I don't really want to set this up. You could do something like that as well, which would be, you know, a little bit different. You'd have to do a little bit of math to sort of work out how it, uh, how it turns into this, but, um, I don't know, just for the sake of it, uh, why don't we try that actually? not too too complicated um, because if we have a center so I mean ultimately we're just going to be calling set camera bounds if we want the minimum X we've got centered on X minus um, I guess 0 0.5 times the width and the maximum X would be the opposite so it's plus half the width and so then for y, we're doing something very similar, but we're going dot y minus half the height and then plus half the height, right? And why don't I rewrite this like this? Because that'll probably make it a little bit easier to read. Hmm, what is it not liking? Too many arguments. Did I misplace a comma in here or something? Oh, oops. Haha. -ha. That's an easy way to screw up. A scene on there. Okay, so if you wanted a scene, a way to set up the camera in the scene that uses the center of where you're looking at and the width and height, this is a way you could do that. I know a few people were curious about that, and I just sort of thought of that on the spot. So um, there's a there's a solution for that if you're interested in it. Um, so for now, I'm just going to continue using this. So this is what my begin looks like. So I'm finding the window, setting its title. So I've got my title up here, getting my game clock, setting the initial time scale, setting up my camera, getting my ball texture, creating the ball object, creating, getting my peg texture, creating my peg object. Um, and I'm giving my ball some velocity to start just so that I can see these things come into collision. Uh, okay, so let me take a quick look at uh, where I'm going with this. Uh, I don't think it should be any big surprise to anybody that my end, I'm going to clean up the ball's textures. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, so what I wanna do is um, fill in my update and my render, right? Those are sort of the, the big ones to, to pay attention to. Now, um, so render can be very simple. Um, do we not have, why is this complaining to me? Oh, okay. Um, I can't remember. Okay, so we still had that in this version. Uh, okay, that's fine. I think in your copy, in your version, um, what am I looking for? Game object. I think in your copy, we simplified down the renderer uh, in game object to only take this matrix four. I think, um, I don't remember perfectly, but I think that's what happened. So I'm just gonna drop that out as, uh, yes, yes, indeed. Okay, so I think what happened in here is that we just ended up simplifying this whole thing down into texture render um, at, 
render position dot x render position dot y is that how that went I think yeah I think that's what's in your version um, maybe I better double check uh, let me take a look I'll just pop this demo open for one second and take a look <laughs> oh, my mistake. The one thing that we did do in there that was important was we were adjusting for the textures with the night. Um, this version of my code has the functions here for get width and get height. If yours is just using width and height um, publicly, that's fine too, but um, this version of my code has this, so uh, adjust accordingly, I guess. Um, okay, sure. So I think game object is sorted out, um, so we can now call render on these things that we want to, and our update um, probably has at least this stuff in it. Because we're going to need to update the world every time, uh, every time a frame goes by, and we don't want to quit the game. So let me first of all just see what this looks like, or if this will build as it is. Um, so you probably double check that everything's cool so far. Okay, so build succeeds. Um, does it run? What does it look like? Okay, so that shut down probably a little more quickly than I think it was supposed to. Hmm. Oh, I think I know what it is. I need to actually set up my world, or my main, so that I am loading the scene. Uh, if I don't load the scene, I'm bound to have a problem. Ah, uh, yes. So... Don't forget to do that. It's an easy way to screw up. Oh, why does it look like this? Oh, okay, I have to add one more thing in here. Um, so if you remember from what you have learned about pure virtual or abstract functions, if you inherit from a class with abstract functions, you need to implement all of its functions or it will give you trouble. So uh, that's what was happening there. It was complaining that if I didn't have handle event in here, it would give me this error. Um, this object of abstract class type assignment for is not allowed. Uh, so if you see that, it's probably because you need to make sure that all of these things are implemented. That's all. Okay, so let's give this one more try. Let's see if this builds and runs. Hey, all right, this looks a lot like I kind of wanted it to. Uh, so I've got my, my planet here, or my peg, I guess this is now, and my ball sort of just, you know, smoothly coasting through the scene at negative 3 and negative 1 meters per second. So uh, we want to know if these things are colliding with one another. So um, let's check. Uh, we have a function for this, right? So check for a collision uh, this frame. So um, we're going to use that variable that we had is colliding and we're going to set it Remember that the test collision function is in our world, so I'm going to get our world and I'm going to ask it to test for a collision between um, the ball's um, body and the peg's body. Um, now, depending on how you have <clears throat> your code written here, um, you may just be saying ball arrow body. Um, this version of my code is the one that is all nicely encapsulated and I have to use these getter functions. So be aware that your code may differ slightly from my own um, for that reason. 
And um, just for kicks, I'm going to dump this out to the terminal so that we have a way to actually see what's going on. And I'll make sure that I go into a new line each time. Okay, so let's give that a try. I'm going to run this and I'm going to make sure that... Okay, so zero, 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 zero. Eh, what? It didn't collide. What happened? All right. So, what's the deal? What went wrong with our test collision? All right. So this is where we we dig ourselves back into uh, debug time. Okay. So. Um, I'm just going to run this and I'm going to throw a breakpoint in here to see what's happening. So we A position and B position. So B to A comes up as 15.5. The distance comes up as 15.8. That seems fine. Radius is a very small number and radius is a very small number. Okay, so I know what my problem is. <laughs> All right, sure. So, um,. I added radius to my body, but I didn't do any work to initialize it, did I? Okay, so let's make sure that we've got that. All we need to do is just say, um, or actually, let's upgrade our body slightly um, by making it take in a radius to start with. How about that? That makes sense. So I'm going to say it takes a float radius, which by default is 1. And, um, oh, that's weird. I'm just going to call that mass. And I'm just going to call this position. That's a little bit nicer. And so we'll then have radius equals small radius. And since this is being defaulted to 1, um, that will automatically set it to start off with. So. Um, I'm going to leave that breakpoint in place uh, here, and I'm going to run this one more time and just see, first of all, that... Oh, right. I probably need to adjust. Uh, my world has an add body function in here, which I don't know that we're using, but um, fix it first. Um, uh, take me to this here. I'll just fix that up. If you don't have this function, don't worry about this. It's not really important. I'm just doing it so that my code will build. I'm probably going to have another error here. Yep. Okay. And so, okay, so I am using this add body in here, uh, which is cool. Um, but if you would prefer not to, if you would rather uh, do this kind of the more uh, old-fashioned way you could just say new body um, and you pass it a mass and right so in my version here I guess you would need to You'd probably have to do something a little bit more like this. I want to make sure to do it this way so that we aren't missing anything. Um, A4 ball radius. So I'm going to say that and we'll pass ball body into here and we want to make sure that um, much at all. Let's do a pointer type. Um, is it that the world is actually just... Aha, okay. And... Okay, I'm realizing that this is possibly a little bit different than the way you guys wrote your code, but um, I'm going to have to sort of go with the way that I did things here to some extent so as to not derail this video. Um, so if you do this in a slightly different way, uh, this is cool. Um, I am going to rely on you guys to have the common sense to figure out how to fix um, what has happened here. 
There's nothing really uh, dramatically wrong, but I'll show you what this function looks like for me. So this world add body, in my case, um, in this version of my code, um, I made a function so that the world is responsible for actually creating the bodies, and you just pass this this um, the mass radius and position, and it creates the body and um, pushes it in. Um, it wouldn't be too hard for me to make a version of this that um, works differently. If I were to do um, body pointer, I'll just pass the body in, and this one probably returns void. There's no reason for it to do anything else. Um, and so if I were to change this, To work this way, um, then instead of creating a new body, I would just pass that in, um, and I'm not returning anything at all. Now in this one, I'm not checking to see if a body already exists in the set or anything like that. I'm being really lazy, um, but that's that works, and um, yeah, so you could do that instead. But since I've spent all this time fussing, I'm just going to leave this the way that it is. Um, I'll let you guys sort out the details. So um, now does this run? Build started, build succeeded. Lovely. All right, so um, now that we hit our break point, so remember that was what we were trying to do again, is we just wanted to see if this change of making the radii uh, get, or making the radius get uh, set when the constructor to body is called, is it good? Sure enough, the radius is getting set. So that should mean if I step in, or I'll just do a step over. Okay, well, the distance is well outside that. So let's just throw a breakpoint inside and we'll see when the collision hits. Let it continue. Oh, that time step was very, very long. Uh, let's, let's let this go. All right. Okay, so they seem to be a little bit distant from one another, but the distance is showing 1.745, right? Now remember the radius of A was one and the radius of B was 0.75. So if this is 1.75, this is in fact less than that and the collision should register. Um, because out normal B to A is not being set, because if you look in our update, I didn't use it, right? So I didn't pass it in. What's happening here is this is just going to get skipped. So this normalize is not going to happen. We're just going to return true, and that'll be that. So let the code continue. Um, ball shoots off the screen. Let me stop that and run it one more time for you, and this time we'll look at our printout. Colliding, not colliding. Cool, right? Very simple. OK, so this puts us. Um, in a pretty good place to uh, to stop off, I think. I, I'm going to leave talking about debug drawing maybe to another time, and in fact, I might just do it in class because um, we got lots of time in class. So um, the next the next YouTube video that you see, I'll probably review debug drawing very quickly, um, but I'm not going to go through building it from end to end. Uh, I might as well. Um, I might as well just uh, get things together and um, we'll move on to talking about collision response. All right, well, anyway, uh, until next week, I wish you the best of luck on your assignments and uh, I'll see you in the next one.